Today's video is sponsored by The Commuter 2 from Cove. I used to use my phone to play sound effects and music for my games, but it really didn't get the job done very well. Now I connect via Bluetooth, use my favorite sound effects app, and my players can feel the thundering footsteps of an approaching army. Seriously, The Commuter 2 has some impressive bass. Or to take it to the next level, split the speaker to hit your players with spooky sounds in stereo. I might actually use the speaker to scare trick-or-treaters. Small enough to hide, loud enough to be heard. The speaker also has a built-in microphone, so your entire group can berate that party member for being late, again. This speaker is hefty, versatile, and it sounds great. The speaker delivers 7 hours of playback on single charge, so you can have music and sound effects even during those marathon sessions. With the code ALL68, you can save 64% off your very own Commuter 2 speaker, which would make it one of the most affordable, unique speakers out there. If you want your very own Commuter 2 speaker, click on my link in the description below to save. And now what you're here for. Wholesome Warlock Makes an Orphan's Unicorn Dream Come True Hi everyone, All Things D&D is back with another story. This one is a heartwarming trip that really highlights the simple cheesy fun you can have playing Dungeons & Dragons. Tell us your heartwarming story after listening to this. The story you're about to hear is true. The names were changed to protect the innocent. When COVID-19 hit the United States, I was temporarily cut off from just about everything. I was put on furlough from my job, the library, then my only source of accessing the internet, was shut down so I couldn't get on the computer, and my weekly game of Dungeons & Dragons was put on hold because the comic store wouldn't let more than 10 people in at a time. My entire life seemed to be in a state of hibernation, and I drearily lived each day in a state of growing depression, with long walks being my only source of enjoyment. Almost everything I used to love was either out of my reach or no longer was able to pull me out of my funk. Eventually, I could stand the misery no more. I was tired of feeling tired, and I decided to do something about it. My younger sister M had always been very interested in D&D, so I asked her if she'd like to play a few games by herself, as no one else in my family was interested. It would just be the two of us playing, but I didn't care, and thankfully neither did M, who rolled up a character with a little help from her big brother. Her character was a human warlock of the Archfey, named Fiona. Fiona had never known her birth parents, having been raised in the woods by fairies. On her 18th birthday, her Fey family had been murdered by a band of warriors, who had the sigil of a crimson crown emblazoned on their armor. Orphaned and alone, Fiona set out on a quest to track these villains down, to avenge the death of her family, traveling across the realm and meeting humans for the first time ever. Whilst traveling through the woods on her way to a small kingdom called Claymore, a random encounter was rolled, and Fiona heard the sound of crying, echoing through the mist-shrouded forest. She snuck toward the sound with the rod of the pack keeper drawn, fearing that it might be some sort of trick, like a monster that mimicked distressed voices to lure in prey. No fearsome beast was lurking in wait, however. When Fiona found the source of the wailing, it proved to be a pitiful orphan girl who had gotten lost in the woods. The child's name was Callista, and she was a tiefling who had been abandoned as a baby on the doorsteps of the orphanage in Claymore. Callista had never been adopted because of her infernal heritage and was largely shunned by the rest of the townsfolk, if not outright tormented for being a cursed devil's child. She lived alone with the orphanage's matron, as all of the other children had been adopted over the years. Callista was old enough to know why she had been denied a family, and was miserable because of it, truly believing herself to be cursed. The only thing that brought her hope was an old nursery rhyme about unicorns and how they would visit and befriend good little girls. Kind of a child-friendly take on how unicorns in real-world mythology were said to tolerate only the presence of virgins. That nursery rhyme was why Callista had run away from home and braved the depths of the forest. She had long dreamed of seeing a unicorn, of having undeniable proof that she was a good person and not destined for evil. The poor girl wandered for three days in the wilderness, looking for the unicorn who was rumored to live there, but she never found one. When Fiona found Callista, she was malnourished, lost, and nearly hysterical. Fiona, having grown up amongst the Fae, had no idea what a tiefling was, but knew that a small child such as this wouldn't survive in the woods long. She fed Callista and escorted her through the wilderness to Claymore, where she was returned to the orphanage, defending her from monsters and bandits along the way. Fiona felt sorry for Callista and decided to hang out with the girl while she was in Claymore. She slept in the mostly vacant orphanage at the insistence of the elderly matron, who was grateful to Fiona for rescuing Callista. Callista, for her part, was happy to have Fiona around, as the warlock was a fellow orphan and could empathize with her plight. The little tiefling hoped that Fiona would stay forever, as it was sort of like having a big sister who could throw eldritch blasts at monsters. Both Callista and the matron hoped that maybe Fiona would adopt Callista, but Fiona never even considered it, as she had a quest for vengeance to complete, as well as no idea of how to raise a child. Still, she was happy to play the part as Big Sis Warlock. Fiona remained at the orphanage for a time until a plot hook came a-calling. 
The princess of Claymore had been kidnapped from her matchmaking ceremony by a bandit chief, and the king begged Fiona to rescue his daughter. Fiona agreed, as the king had very kindly allowed her to use his private library to study the Crimson Crown sigil, worn by the evil knight she was hunting. She plunged into the misty forest once again, and was able to quickly pick up the bandit's trail. As Fiona crept through the woods, a random encounter was rolled. She found herself standing in a moonlit glen, shrouded with mists, and surrounded by ancient and gnarled oak trees. A babbling brook, its surface shimmering with the lights of the stars above, snaked across the forest floor. Standing at the edge of the brook with its head bent to drink from the crystal clear waters was a unicorn with a silvery white coat and ebony mane, its horn gleaming with pearlescent radiance under the moon. Fiona was surprised, but approached the unicorn as a friend, and the celestial steed introduced herself as Sibella, guardian of the forest, who was tracking down the bandits herself so she could drive them away from her sacred ground. Seeing as the two had a common foe, Fiona and Sibella decided to unite to defeat the bandits and rescue the princess. What followed was a brief but brutal combat encounter in the bandits' lair. Fiona was built to be an eldritch blasting machine, and she had made a few spell scrolls for her hex spell so she could consistently do even more damage to her foes. Sibella had legendary actions that allowed her to heal herself and Fiona. Also, she used her horn in a surprisingly brutal fashion, just goring bandits left and right. Together they were able to vanquish the werebore leader of the bandits and his lieutenants, and drove what rogues who survived out of the forest. The princess was rescued and the day was saved. When Fiona returned to Claymore with the princess in tow, she was showered with praise and wealth from the grateful king. Sibella didn't return to Claymore with Fiona, however, as she had no desire for accolades or fortune. She was very grateful to Fiona, however, and told the warlock if she ever needed the aid of a unicorn that all she had to do was ask. Fiona decided to call in that favor almost immediately, but rather than use it to get a powerful NPC follower with magical attacks, teleportation powers, healing magic, and both lair and legendary actions, she decided to ask the unicorn for something a little less adventurous, but a lot more heartwarming. That night, Fiona was enjoying supper at the orphanage, with Callista and the matron. Their conversation was interrupted by the sudden sound of trotting hooves coming up the lane, followed by a loud knock on the door. The matron, not knowing who had visited such a late hour, rose to answer the door and was shocked into silence by who she saw on the other side. Sibella the unicorn grandly trotted into the orphanage and said, I understand that there's a good little girl here who is yet to see a unicorn. That night the peaceful slumber of the townsfolk was interrupted by a strange sound that echoed through the streets. The sound of a horse galloping at full trot down the cobblestone roads and the shrieking delighted laughter of a little girl. Few investigated the sound, but those who did were startled to witness the peculiar sight of a small tiefling child riding on the back of a magnificent unicorn under the light of the moon, with tears of joy streaking down her face. This story is kinda cheesy, I know, but it's a good kinda cheesy. The kinda cheesy that I think the world could use a little of right now. The real world has a lot of misery in it, and I think one of the advantages of tabletop games is that the horrible things we're helpless to stop in real life can be faced and conquered in fiction. Callista may have been abandoned by her parents and was living in an orphanage, but that visit from Sibella gave her but that visit from Sibella gave her self-confidence and hope again, as well as a unicorn buddy, and it was all thanks to Fiona. It was a memorable and charming moment from a game I ran for my sister, and remains one of my favorite stories of my time running Dungeons and Dragons. I think this is exactly the right kind of cheesy. It's heartwarming and wonderful. It reminds me of playing D&D with my older brother. Please let us know what you think and comment down below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel All Things D&D. Our next video will be posted in three days, so stay tuned for more amazing Dungeons & Dragons content.